hi guys welcome to today's video in today's video i'm going to be teaching you guys how to create this loading advanced image slider in figma this tutorial is very beginner friendly and it's really easy to understand so if this is something you're interested please do stick around don't forget to like subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified whenever i post a new video so without further ado let's get started with the video Alright guys, so to get started with this advanced image slider tutorial video, I have an empty Figma file open here named advanced image slider. And the first thing we are going to do is to go to the frame section and select a frame that we are going to be using. For this video, I'm going to be using the desktop frame of 1440 versus 1024. And the next thing we are going to do here now is to bring in our images. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste in the set of images I'm going to be using for this video so we have four individual images as you can see here so these images as you can see on the layer section they are in format of a frame basically like a desktop frame just like this all we need to do to, is to go to fill section and fill the frame with an image that's basically how i achieved these images and you want to make sure all your images are of the same dimension in terms of width and height right so that you don't have some um, errors when it comes to the sliding animation now, once we have these images, the next thing I want to do is to have different text for different images. So for this, we have web and mobile. I want to have a title and subtitle for web and mobile. For software solutions, I want to have a title and subtitle. So next, I'm going to go ahead to paste in all the title and subtitle because I don't want to waste your time by typing all of them out. All right, so I'm just going to paste in the title and subtitle. As you can see here, the title and subtitle for all the different image categories but if i copy the web and mobile title and subtitle for instance and i paste it here you can see that we don't have enough contrast in our image so the white layers of the background is not really making the white in the image very readable so what we are going to do is we are going to add some kind of opacity to all the images so i'm going to select this image as you can see here and i'm going to come to the fill section and click on this plus button that means i'm going to add a black background but i'm going to increase the opacity to 68 so you can see that we've added a black background to our image so that we can see our text better. I'm going to reduce the background. I think 60% should be okay. And I'm going to leave it at this. Once I am done adding the opacity for the first image, I'm going to do the same thing for the second. Click on it, add a black background, increase the opacity to 60%. And I'm going to copy the text for software solution. And I'm going to paste it in. I'm just going to leave it wherever it is. I'm going to go ahead to align the text properly later in the video. I'm going to select business automation, do the same thing, add the background, make it 60%, um, copy the text for business automation, and paste it in. Because as you can see, this image, they are also a frame, right? The frame is just filled with the background, and then we have our text inside the frame. So you want to take note of that when working with your images. I'm going to click on consulting. I'm going to do the same thing add a background, make it 60%, and I'm going to copy the text, and I'm going to paste the text. So in terms of the alignments, there's a way we can do this very easily. Once you click on your text and you're hovering around on the screen, you're going to see that it's going to show you some markers that indicate um, the alignment of this. So as you can see, this red marker is showing that the text is in the middle. I'm just going to leave it that way on the horizontal scale i'm just going to leave it once it is showing that it's in the middle i'm going to leave it i'm going to do the same thing for all this text once the red marker indicates that it's in the middle i'm just going to leave it um, once the red marker indicates that it's in the middle i'm going to leave it uh, i'm going to do the same thing here once it shows that it's in the middle i'm just going to find the middle uh, and i'm going to leave it just like that so once i have all of this i'm going to select all the text itself again and I'm going to come to this left align button and just properly left align every single one of them. Now we have our slider sections all ready to go. Now the next thing we want to do is the bottom loading animation that we have for each of these categories, the bottom loading animation. And in order to achieve that, we'll go ahead to start creating that particular section. We no longer need this text section, so I'm just going to remove it so that we don't get confused. And we will start creating our bottom section. So I'm going to click on the text T on the keyboard and click on text. And I'm just going to type in web 
and mobile, which is the first category. As you can see, the text here, it's, um, but for this font type of this, I'm going to select this. And as you can see, we are using Inter here. But for this, we are using Poppins for the title and Avenir for the text. So I'm going to use Poppins for this. So I'm just going to select this text. And I'm going to select Poppins here. I'm going to leave it at 18. And I'm going to increase the font width to medium. Once I do that, I'm going to select the text. I'm going to hit Shift A to create an auto layout on the text. And I want to use a fixed dimension. So for the width, I want to have a width of 360. And I also want to have a height of 100 pixel. Once I have this, you can see we have our frame here. Once I have this, the next thing we want to do is to create a rectangle. I'm going to click on the rectangle. And I'm going to create a rectangle here. The height of the rectangle is going to be 100 pixel, the same height as the frame that we have here. And the width of the rectangle for a start is going to be 1 pixel. I'm going to leave it at that. Once I have this rectangle here, it's going to be quite difficult to see at the moment. And that's fine. I'm going to change the color of this rectangle to a deep blue color. I'm just going to paste in the hex code for the blue I'm going to be using. So once we have this, I'm going to select this particular rectangle here and I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to align them to the left. So you can see this left align icon here. I'm going to align all of it to the left. Once I do that, once both your rectangle and your frame is aligned to the left, you want to right click and frame selection. You want to contain both your rectangle and your text in a frame. So once you frame selection, you can see if we open up our frame, you can see we have the rectangle and the text. This is very important. Make sure your rectangle layer is below your text layer, right? You can see this frame where we have the text. I'm just going to rename this to text. So you can see this frame where we have the text is above the rectangle layer. And I'm going to explain to you guys why in a bit. So I'm going to close this up. Now we have a frame that shows web and mobile. What we want to do is to create four instances of this for each of this image slider category. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to move this to the right or to the left. And I'm going to create a duplicate by holding down Alt and then duplicating this. So for the next, aside web and mobile, we have software solutions. So I'm going to change this to software solutions. I'm going to also go to business automation. I'm going to create another one and make this business automation. I think we have one more, and I'm going to create enough space for the last one. And the fourth one is um, consulting and procurement. I'm not going to write out the entire text because that's a lot, but I'm just going to write only consulting. So I'm going to type in consulting. Right, once we have this, what I want to do next is to select all of this. As you can see, these four rectangles here, and hit Shift A on them. Once you have this, we can then copy this and come to our slider, which is this web and mobile, select it and paste it in. Once you paste it in, you can paste it. It's going to stay on anywhere of the slider. That's OK. We then come to this alignment section here and align bottom. You can now see that this section is now aligned to the bottom of this slider. But we don't want to use this dark color for the text. As you can see, it's difficult to read. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to this selection section and select this dark and change it to white. Now you can see that this is a lot more readable. One more thing we are going to do is to select all of these sections, come to this stroke section and add a stroke to it. I'm going to add a stroke of white. Once you do that, you can see that this is a lot more visible. Then I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it into all of these sliders that we have. And as you can see that each of these um, boxes is 360 pixels in width. And if you calculate 360 pixels times 4, it gives us 1,440. So depending on the desktop frame you are having and the number of categories you want to have, you can do the maths and make sure you divide the box evenly. You want the box to look as even as possible. So once you have this, the next thing we want to do now is to start prototyping. Make sure your frame is inside your 
slider. Make sure the frame, this frame that you're pasting is inside the slider. So, so once you've successfully put all the frames in the slider, the next thing you want to do is to select all these frames that you've created, all these slider that you've created, and hit Shift A on them. And the reason we are hitting Shift A on this is so that it helps us easily duplicate this slider because we want to have two copies of each. So I'm going to click on this first header section here and I'm going to click on Command D. You can click Control D if you're using a PC. I'm going to go to the next slider here, which is Software Solution. Click on Command D to duplicate it. I'm going to come to the third one here, uh, which is Business Automation. Select it, click on Command D to duplicate it. Then come to the last one here, which is Consulting and Procurement, and also duplicate it. Now we have um, eight instances of this. Now, I'm going to select the frame that holds or contains all of this, the auto layout frame that we added to contain all of this. And I'm, and I'm going to hit on Command Shift G, which could be Control Shift G if you're using a PC. This is to just break the frame. This is to remove the frame from them. If you can't do that, what you can do is to select all the items in it, just like this, and remove it from the frame. So you have your frame. But an easy way to do this, of course, is to hit Command Shift G or Control Shift G if you're using a PC. So once you have this and you've broken all the frames and you have your duplicates, you have eight instances of this, the next thing you want to do is to change it to a component and start prototyping. So to make this a component, I'm going to select all the slider menus like this. I'm going to come to this component section and I'm going to click on Create Component Set. Once we have the component sets, we can now create our interactive component. To get started with our interactive component, for all the second instance, we want to make a change to it. So let me show you guys what I mean. If you click on, here we have the first instance of this slider. Here we have the second instance of this slider. For the second instance of the slider, I want to click on the respective category in this frame. So this is web and mobile. We want to select web and mobile. We want to open up the frame, come to this rectangle here. And for the rectangle, we want to now make it the same width as the text frame. And remember, the text frame is 360 pixels. The blue rectangle now fills the entire frame. We want to do that for all the slider. For the second one, this is the first instance. This is the duplicated instance. We want to click on the respective category here, which is software solution. Come to the rectangle. And remember, the rectangle has to be below the text so that you can see the text. Come to the rectangle and increase the width also to 360. We are going to do the same thing for the third instance. We have the first and the duplicated copy here. For the duplicated copy, we want to select the respective section, which is this business automation. Click on the rectangle, make it 360. So, so we want to do the same thing also for the last one. Here we have consulting. This is the first copy and this is the duplicated copy. We want to create click on consulting, select the rectangle and make it 360 pixel. Now if you zoom out, you will have a broader understanding of what we are trying to achieve here, 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 and here. So now we can start prototyping. All right, so creating the prototype for this particular image slider is actually the easiest part of this video. So in order to do this, I'm going to select this. You want to make sure you switch to the prototype menu you want to select the first slider, I want to connect the dots from the first one to the second one. And you want the trigger here to be an after delay, and you want to have a zero millisecond. But for the animation type, you want it to be a smart animate, and you want it to be 3000 millisecond. Right? You want it to be 3000 millisecond, and you want to close out this. So basically, when you're switching from the first slider to the duplicate of the first slider where you have this rectangle filled with blue, you want to have one millisecond and a smart animate of 3,000 milliseconds. But when you're switching from the first slider, for instance, to the second slider, when you're switching between two different sliders, what you want to do is you want to have a smart anim you want to have a trigger of after delay of zero millisecond or one millisecond, and then you want your animation type to be instant. It is that simple. So we are going to do the same thing across all our sliders. So we are on the second one, we are switching from the first instance of the second to the second instance of the second. Our trigger remains after delay, and the after delay is one millisecond, and we want a smart animate and a smart animate of 3,000 millisecond, right? So, but when we are switching from one slider to a different slider, 
we want an after delay, an after delay of one millisecond, and we want the animation type to be instant. Like I said, it's that simple. We are going to repeat the same thing. Here we have two similar sections, two similar sliders. I'm going to create the prototype down to the second one. We want the trigger to be after delay, as usual, one millisecond. We want the animation type to be smart animates and 3000 millisecond. Then we are switching to a different slider here, as you can see, which is we are switching from the third to the fourth one. And the switch after delay, after delay is one millisecond and animation type is instant. I'm going to close this up. Now we are switching from the first instance of the last one to the second instance of it. The trigger is still going to be after delay, one millisecond, and we want the animation type to be smart animate, 3000 millisecond. But once we have gotten to the last one here, of course we want to return back to the first one. So I'm going to click on this last one, and I'm going to connect the wires back to the first one. And for this, because we are going to a different section, the trigger is still going to be after delay, one millisecond, and we want the animation type to be instant. To be instant, it's that simple. So once we are done with the prototyping, what you want to do is to copy the first one and paste it on our frame that we have here. I'm going to make sure I switch to the design section. I'm going to make sure that this particular image slider fits the desktop frame. I also want the desktop frame to be the same height, and as you can see, the image slider is 850. I'm also going to give the desktop frame a height of 850. Once we have this, I'm still going to select the desktop frame, go to the prototype, click on flow starting point, then I'm going to click on our prototype um, button, which is our play button basically, so that we can see our prototype. And I hope this comes out the way we want it. As you can see, loading animation completes, goes to the next section. Loading animation completes, goes to the next section, which is typically what we want. So guys, I hope this video was helpful. This is a very simple way to create an advanced loading slider animation in Figma. If you find this video helpful, you can do well to leave a comment, like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so that you get more videos like this. Bye for now, and I'm going to see you guys in my next video.